Next week at seven, Hubert Gregg in a new series of Thanks for the Memory. Radio 2 now, with Alan Dell still away on his holiday, we have two illustrious guests taking care of the next hour. Coming up at 8 o'clock with the big band era will be band leader Ken McIntosh. But first, to take us back to the dance band days, we welcome Ken's one-time employer, best known to us for his years behind the Housewives' Choice microphone, George Elric. Thanks very much, and hello. And if you're wondering why that Scotsman from Housewives' Choice should be looking after Alan Dell's spot... Well, the truth is that a greater part of my professional life has been spent behind a drum kit in various dance bands than in front of the housewife Joyce Mike. So this is going to be an enjoyable reminiscence for me. Let's open the show with the band that gave me my first big break, not only as a drummer, but as a singer too. In January 1936... Here's the BBC Dance Orchestra directed by Henry Hall with a very appropriate curtain raiser. It's The Music Goes Round and Around. Up, she said, you're grand So I replied in words so down Now this is how the music goes round I blow through here The music goes round and around Oh, and it comes up here I push the first bow down The music goes down and around Oh, and it comes up here I push the middle valve down, the music goes down around, below, 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 dilly ho ho ho, listen to the notes come out. I push the other valve down, the music goes round and around, oh, 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 oh and it comes out here. I push the slide way out The music goes round and about Oh, when it comes up here I push the slide way down The music goes down around Below, below, below Dilly ho, ho, ho Listen to the jazz come out I make the funniest sound The music goes round and around Oh, when it comes out here Yours truly being given the opportunity to sing the smash hit song of 1936 with Henry Hall and the BBC Dance Orchestra. And that lovely trumpet was played by Billy Smith and the trombone by Eric Tan, two well-known musicians of the day. So let's go back to the beginning. I'm from Aberdeen, as perhaps you've noticed, and it wasn't easy for a young Aberdonian to break into the big-time dance band world. Having come to London on spec, I hang around Archer Street, along with so many other jobbing musicians looking for a gig to keep the wolf from the door. 
and eventually persistence paid off and I began to get recommended for odd sessions. One of the oddest that I played on was by the West Indian pianist Reginald Forsyth. Here's a typical sample, The Garden of Weed. From February 1934, that was Reginald Forsyth and his new music with the Garden of Weed. The title, incidentally, tells a little about the man. Another more conventional band I was asked to play with was that of Billy Mason, and this gave me the opportunity to work with some truly fine players. On this next recording, just listen to altruist Harry Hayes and tenor man Buddy Featherston Hall battling it out on that old favourite, If You Knew Susie. <laughs> Thank you. 
what a girl. And oh, what a great little band. If I may be allowed a little modest pride as one of the participants. That was Billy Mason and his orchestra, as it said on the label, May 1935. And along with Harry Hayes and Buddy Featherston Hall were Duncan White trumpet, Dave Shan clarinet, Alan Ferguson guitar, Bill Busby on the bass and myself on drums, and of course the leader, Billy Mason, on piano. Now here's a recording I was proud to be part of. In 1934, a great performer by the name of Valeda came to this country as part of the review Blackbirds of 1934, which was so successful that it was extended and became Blackbirds of 1935. Well, whilst she was here, she cut a number of records, usually using none other than Billy Mason's band, and I took part in the very first session. It turned out to be a great one. After being introduced, the lady said to me, Now, Georgie boy, you just give me a good swearing tempo on your drums and we'll sure go. And we did. I wish that I were twin, you great big baby kin, so I could love you twice as much as I do. I'd have four loving arms to embrace you, for I'd idolize you with time, I'd face you. With two hearts twice as true, what couldn't four lips do? When four years, here's your saying I'm yours, you great big baby kin. I could love you twice as much as I do. You baby, baby kin, how I wish that I were twins. So I could love ya twice as much as I do. I've had for loving arms to embrace you. For I've loved you all oh, the time I face you. This two hot twice to just tell me what could both it do. When for years, here's you saying I'm yours. You great big baby kin, now I also wish that I were twin, so I could love you twice as much as I do. Yeah, man. Valera. Valera Snow was her name, and that was her singing and playing the trumpet with Billy Mason's orchestra in January 1935, and a great hit it turned out to be. I wish that I were twins. Now going back to my beginnings, my interest in dance bands and jazz started when I was very young. I made a crystal set and put an aerial up in my mother's loft, and I used to sit and listen to the Savoy Orpheans with Fred Elizalde on 2LO. The drummer was Ronnie Gobertini, and I thought he was terrific. It was he who was responsible for changing the direction of my life, to be a drummer instead of a surgeon. I'd left Gordon's College with a bursary when I was 10, but couldn't afford to go to the university, so turned to music. I was formally trained by Bill Cummings, the father of Jock Cummings, the drummer, at various times with Ambrose, Jack Hilton, and of course the Squadroneers. Anyway, here I was in the prestigious BBC Dance Orchestra. Let's have another sample of our fair. An apt title this, because with Henry, I was able to get a brand new suit. <laughs> Thank you. 
brand new suit. Got a brand new suit. Got a brand new tie. Got a brand new tie. Got a brand new twinkle in my eye. Do you know the reason why I got a brand new girl? Ooh. And I won't dispute. I got a brand new tie and a brand new suit When I'm with her Gotta look my best Put on my tan shoes Waist pants Double-breasted vest Gonna wear my tie pin It's a tech look girl With a brand new tie and a brand new suit And a brand new girl January 1936, Henry Hall got a brand new suit. Of course, it was Henry Hall who was responsible for inviting the great Benny Carter over to this country. And I well remember Benny taking a look at all my instruments and asking if I really played them all, 12 in number, as he would like to write some interesting sounds for them. Sadly, Benny was not permitted by the Union to broadcast with us, but he wrote some wonderful arrangements, and he did get some recording dates for Decca, using top session men of the day. Well, the first date had the great Roni Gubertini, my childhood hero on drums, so you can imagine my pride when Benny picked me for the next session. Here's one of the tracks we made then, If I Could Only Read Your Mind. <laughs>
Lenny Carter and his orchestra in June 1936, If I Could Only Read Your Mind. Well, there boy hangs a tale. Because of my BBC contract, I wasn't really supposed to freelance. So my name was listed as G. Kilser. But someone blew the gaff from the melody maker by writing, and I quote, A drummer of BBC fame and G. Kilser are one and the same. It's his drumming that matters on Benny's hot platters, not his anagrammatical name. <laughs> well, thanks to the radio exposure with Henry Hall, by 1937, I was well known enough to go out with a band under my own name, which is just what I did for some years. As well as appearing as a guest vocalist with various bands like Geraldo's and Jack Payne's, and recently I put together an album of some of the many sides I recorded on the Columbia label. And from that album, here's a number which features Vera Lynn's husband, Harry Lewis, on clarinet, and Archie Craig on trumpet. No need to guess the vocalist. It's me, myself, and I. <laughs> And I, we're all in love with you. We all think you're wonderful, we do. Me, myself, and I, we've just one point of view. We're convinced there's no one else like you. Who oh, it can be denied, dear. You brought the sun to us. We'd be satisfied, dear, if you belong to one of us. So if you pass me by, three hearts will break in two. Cause me, myself, and I are all in love with you. Well, time for just one more, and I've picked another one from my album, although this time not with yours truly on vocal. I expect you remember Anne Lenner, the lovely singer with Carl Gibbons for many years. Her sister, Judy Shirley, was also a fine artist, as was her youngest sister, Shirley Lenner. She was recommended to me by Anne, and it's she who takes the vocal on this recording, aged only 12 at the time. I get a look in, look in on vibes just after the vocal on Somebody's Thinking of You Tonight.
Somebody's Thinking of You Tonight by my own band in 1938 which, sad to say, wraps up Miles' little session with you. But I'm glad to tell you that following me right after the news is a young lad who once worked for me as an alto player. His name is Ken McIntosh. Thanks to my producer, Roy Oakshot. Very many thanks, Roy. And to you for listening. Till we meet again, this is George Elric saying bye-bye now. BBC